Hello, my world. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Anywhere you're watching from, it's time to read with me. I'm going to be reading my book. The Lord told me, your book might not reach the world on paper, but when you read it to the world, the world will hear. I believe God has given us inspiration to write. And if my book hasn't reached you, at least you can listen to it. The first book God helped me to write is You Are, Volume 1. So I'm going to be reading one chapter a week so that you'll be able to, on your own comfort, at your own time, just relax and let the word of God enter into you. I know some people find it hard to read books, but when I read it through the audio, you can listen to it over and over. And I know the spoken word will bless you. So today, I'm reading You Are, written by Chinwe Obadei, Dedication. I would like to dedicate this book to my darling husband, Apostle Albert, my children, Jemima, Emmanuel, Naomi, Albert Jr., Zanita, Amarachi, Pomalaya, Samuel, Akuna, my loving mother, Mrs. Mercy, Okanacho, Emmanuel, and all the members of Foundation Ministries worldwide. All of you have kept me in right spirit, encouraged me to move forward, believing in my God-given assignments, ministered with me in different counties of Ireland and across the world. You all have made my family and God's family a pleasant and enjoyable place to be on the face of the earth. All of us are under the shadows of the Almighty. I love you all. The content of the book, chapter one will be dealing with, you are the temple of God. Chapter 2 will be, you are God's battle axe. Chapter 3 will be, you are God's masterpiece. Chapter 4 will be, you are the light of the world. Number 5 will be, chapter 5 will be, you are God's workmanship. Chapter 6 will be, you are God's treasure. Chapter 7 will be, you are Christ's ambassadors. So, without wasting time, I'm going to read the introduction. The introduction. The word of God stands true forever. It can never change. It is eternal in nature. God and his words are same. You cannot separate him from his word. You need to change God before his word can change and God cannot change Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says I am the Lord I change not determined to get the best of this book as you read through you may be familiar to some facts expressed in this book but they are God's divine assignment for every believer. Understanding that God has given information in this book that will bring transformation within us and prepare us to meet the Lord Jesus. Nobody really wants to be less than what God has appointed him or her to be. There is always an inner desire and deep hunger for every believer to be whom God says they are. 
This is exactly what this book is all about. It will show you who the Lord says you are and then show you how to become all that God said you are. Make this confession before you go on reading this book. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Heavenly Father, I open my heart today to receive your word. I know your word has power to transform. So as I read this book, my life is transformed from glory to glory. Amen. You are chapter one. Chapter one, you are the temple of God. You are a temple. You are a structure reserved for God's spiritual activities such as prayer, worship, and sacrifice to the Lord of the whole universe. You have become the dwelling place of our God. You are a sacred structure. I believe that God resides in you. God resides in you. What a great joy. You are a house of worship. All through the Old Testament, the Lord God had a temple for his people. But in the New Testament, he has his people for a temple. You are the temple of God. We are entitled to be called God's temple because we have been redeemed by the death of Jesus Christ. Because of the redemption, the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in us, the redeemed. In the old dispensation of the law, the tabernacle and later the temple were given over entirely to God for his sacred use. They were called holy because they were separated and used for his purpose and glory alone. It symbolizes the house of God on earth, which we are. In the new dispensation of grace, the Christians are called God's temple. The believer must believe and must yield his or her whole life without any reservation to God. Our body is a sacred temple, holy unto the Lord. God has claimed us by the means of redemption. Our bodies are what he claims for his holy purpose. We are and we must yield to him. I beg you. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We will do what the Bible admonishes as we remind ourselves that we are His holy temple. If we have learned that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, we will keep it on the fire. Your body is a temple. Of the Holy Spirit. From the moment you believe on Christ as your Savior, the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through His Spirit that dwells in you. Romans 8:11. The Apostle Paul clearly has in mind the glory of God filling the temple. Therefore, as the glory filled the temple of old, so the Holy Spirit dwells with the believer of Jesus Christ. He dwells in you. When a sinner has become born again, God dwells in the holy place. And that person can commune in fellowship with the Lord in holiness. The Holy Spirit is a living person in Godhead. You literally dwell in us. The dwelling of the Holy Spirit is in our body. It's a real indwelling 
of a real individual, spiritual person. That divine person is the very God of the very God, equal to the Father and the Son. If you are obedient disciple, Jesus promised that he and the Father will come unto you and make their abode in you. That alone is a secret of a normal Christian life. We are to be God-possessed and indwelled by the Spirit of God, trusting Him to do all that He has promised to do in us and through us. When I surrender myself wholly to God, He accepts, cleanses, fills, and then uses me to His glory and honor. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, a living person, a divine presence, is God's means of reconciling the world to himself. In the old dispensation, God took possession of the temple and indwelled in it so he could bless his people and they in turn bless the world. The Holy Spirit invades the temple of your body assumes residence in you and begins the recreation of Christ to the glory of the Father. One by one, as we yield to the sovereignty, he is changing the world. He gives us the whole new strength and vitality. He brings to us the fullness of his life. This is no greater, there is no greater pleasure to the Holy Spirit than to dwell in his temple and do extraordinary works through extraordinary people who have learned to make themselves available to him to reign with him sovereignty one day the day completed when they completed jerusalem temple was dedicated to god the glory of the lord filled the house also, when Moses completed the tabernacle in the wilderness, which had the same purpose as the temple, but was a tent, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. As you read through the Old Testament books of Chronicles and the Kings, however, you find that the glory of the Lord was often far from the temple because men had defied it. In Chronicles chapter 2, verse 29, we find King Hezekiah bringing restoration to the temple. He opened doors and repaired them. He had the priests carry out the filthiness out of the holy place and cleanse the inner parts, bringing out all the unclean things that they found. So also, as God's temple, the first step in glorifying God in your body and in your spirit is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the Lord. If you have never taken this step or are not sure of your salvation, it is time you take this important decision. If you are born again, but as you read this book, there are maybe things in your life which are not glorifying to God in your body. And spirit things which are causing your temple to be defiled and unclean you need to take steps to clean your temple and then keep it clean from all the that will defy it therefore put to death your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanliness passion evil desires covetousness which is idolatry in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, you will see that. To put to death your members means not to feed or promote sin. Sometimes gangrene occurs in a part of our physical body. Gangrene means that an area is deadened because the supply of nutrients is cut off. Similarly, if you struggle with temptation to drink, why do you visit the bar? Are you addicted to pornography? This sin of fornication is fed by what you see 
and your eyes and you dwell and dwell in your thoughts. For example, King David saw Bathsheba birthing and rather than running away, he continued looking. Finally, he sent for her that he might lie with her. Joseph, on the other hand, ran from temptation. He could have lingered with Potiphar's wife and considered her proposal. After all, they were all alone. Who would, who would know? But Joseph lived to glorify the Lord. He said, why should I do this and sin against God? And he ran away. He put to death his members, refusing to give himself an occasion to sin. You can read that in Genesis chapter 39. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what agreement has the temple of God with the temple of idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Therefore come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. That will be Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. The downfall of many believers is their fellowship with the ungodly. The Lord warned Israel that to marry with the ungodly will cause them to go after other gods. King Solomon loved many foreign women. They turned his heart after their own gods. Much more could be written in the subject of glorifying God in our body and in the spirit of your temple. In Isaiah 6, 1 to 8, you can read that. No. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Is the Lord sitting upon the throne of your temple? Does it fill your temple or is it crowded to one side by other things? To be able to glorify God in your body and in your spirit, you must first of all receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Do you not know that yourself are the temple and God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God destroys him, for God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. We are that temple. God, through his word, says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If God says that you are something, then you are. You are what God says you are. You should know what you are and function as God has ordained you to function. Beloved. We are God's people. We are God's temple. He is living in us. The Bible says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defies the temple of God, God destroys him. For the temple is God, is holy. Which, the te which temple you are? You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Beloved, I pray that you will understand how we are God's people and how we can be his temple and how he lives and dwells within us. It takes faith to understand the spiritual times. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Who do you have? Do you not know God is inside of you? Who owns you? For we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You know not that you are the temple and the spirit of God dwells in you? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? 
for we are the temple of the living God. God says, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were demolished, we have a building of God. It has not made with hand a tunnel in heaven. God had made this world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, and dwelt not in temple made with hand. Howbeit the Most High dwells not in a temple made with hand. Take care of God's temple. Many worldly Christians have been led to believe that the only way to worship God is to go to certain building. And once they are there to perform a series of traditions which are by no means ceremonial in nature. So, emotionally, we go. But it is, is that worshipping? No. When you go to the dictionary, it says, Worship is having regard with great and extraordinary respect, honor, and devotion. Is that what is taking place in our numerous churches today? In the temples today? Do you go to church? Do you go to temple with regards with great respect for God? With honor and devotion for Him, your Creator? Or is it just a, a, con a conscious excusing exercise that you perform out of tradition or habit. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can you be worshiping God while sitting on the toilet? Tell me, why not? Can I be worshiping God at work or play? What is stopping you from regarding him with great respect, honor, and devotion when dressing in your, in your overall or covering or wherever you are. Let us leave off the white sepulchers of outward appearance in favor of loving God with all our heart, all our mind, and with all our soul. As God himself said when choosing David to lead Israel, for the Lord sees not what a man sees. For man looked at the outward appearance, but God looked at the heart. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. We should not only be caring for God's temple of our physical body in giving it proper nutrient, exercise, and healthy eating and attitude, but we need to be caring much more for the eternal body and our spirit which will live forever what know you know that your body is in temple of the holy spirit and god dwells in you which you have god owns you you are the one that god owns you don't own yourself you are bought with a precious price be not ye the servant of men. For we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Your body is a temple of God. Be careful where it goes. Be careful what it does. Be careful what it ponders on. Be careful how it reacts. The Holy Spirit is building up the body of Christ to glory. Allow the Holy Spirit as a temple. Allow the Holy Spirit as God's temple to one, regenerate you. Two, dwell in you. Three, anoint you. Four, the Holy Ghost baptized. Five, empower you. Six, sanctify you. Seven, comfort you. Eight, give you joy. Nine, give you discernment. Ten, 
bear fruit in you. Eleven, give you fruit. Beloved, surrender your body, God's temple, to the Lord. Glorify God in your body daily, every day. I will see the Lord honoring you. That is the end of chapter one. In the book, you are that I have written. My Facebook, we're going to be back again this time by the grace of God on once on Wednesday as we read chapter two. God bless you. Remember, you are the temple of the living God. Mind what is operating in your temple, and God bless you. Thank you.